Happy Homebrew Wednesday. <sighs> Nothing like water. Even though it is in a pea colored bottle, it's still just water. But this evening I went for a bike ride and I biked about six and a half miles in about a half hour. So did a lot better than Monday, which uh, was pretty horrid actually. But as far as brewing stuff going this week, um, I still got to bottle up the single hop IPA I made with the Caliente hops for the hop experiment um, and get that mailed out this week. So that's probably going to happen this weekend. Um, and if you refer back to some of my earlier videos, um, I started kind of a, a running joke that it's impossible to have a double brew day. And uh, I actually made two batches of beer last weekend. So I don't have a ton of footage from that, but I'll try to cut a little bit in at the end. Um, I did a brew in a bag, a uh, single malt and two hops beer. Uh, just straight up Golden Promise malt with some nugget and brewer's gold from a local hop farm and I'm, I've been working with the owner of the farm on getting a website set up for them so if you check out hoppyfarm.com uh, the company name is actually Egg Dynamics but it's a it's a pretty cool hop farm they have uh, I think they have 14 acres um, that they're expecting to be some of it's in the, the third year of production um, and some of it is just they planted last year and it was basically just to establish so check out the site uh, let me know um, right now it's mostly pictures there's very brief text descriptions of what the pages are going to be about but the operation there is really cool because the guy has a lab basically built right into the greenhouse so before he plants any hop rhizomes or hop plants on his farm he actually uh, screens them for viruses and diseases and other stuff and he only takes the clean stock and plants that so as he moves forward and adds more varieties or just more plants um, there's going to be a lot lower incidence of disease so for him that's awesome because the diseases um, affect the yield and stuff so it's a really cool operation it's still pretty small compared to some of the farms out west but to me it seems like he's doing it the right way because he's trying to do it uh, he's got a solid understanding of the science of growing hops and uh, it's it's gonna be cool but uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to add some other stuff to the site in the near future so check out hoppyfarm.com um, feel free to email me jake at superbrewers.com with ideas or questions that uh, I'm gonna try to get some informational videos made with him um, and get those up on the site as well so uh, yeah check it out and the anyway little tangent there uh, getting back to my double brew day the uh, the single malt beer that I made um, I did brew in a bag so I got that going inside and uh, started in my kitchen. Um, my wife and kids spent the day with my wife's mom, and so I had the house to myself, so that's how I got two batches of beer done. The other thing that helped was I did, uh, the other batch was an extract of specialty grains. I made a 10-gallon extract batch of stout, and it smells really good. Um, actually, they both smell awesome. 
I can't wait to see how the how they both turn out. But they were both bubbling away really good. Um, for the fermenter, for the stout, one of the things I did different is um, I lined the ale pail fermenter I was using with a food safe plastic bag. One of the guys in my homebrew club had tried it out and he bought like a whole case of these, uh, they're basically bun covers for bakeries, but he's, he said he's done a bunch of batches with them and had really good results. It helps make cleanup a lot easier. Basically, you just pull the bag out, throw it in the trash, and you're done. Your fermenter's clean. Um, or if there is a, a, any leakage, it's a very small amount. So I'm thinking that'd be awesome. Uh, and yeah, I um, I'll get some video for next week of the hop plants. They're starting to poke out. Um, the one cascade plant I found already has a sprout about this tall and it's only been in the ground for about two weeks. So I'm really excited about that. And I, I was hoping to get footage of it today just to show a little more detail about the way my hops are laid out because I've seen some people with uh, videos of the way they planted their hops and you're gonna run into trouble if they're different varieties planted just a couple feet away. I mean, if you care about being able to separate them, they're just gonna intermingle because within a year and a half, you're gonna have sprout, uh, you're gonna have shoots coming up two or three feet away from wherever you plant them because the, the rhizomes actually grow out along the ground as well as down and so they're gonna end up crossing each other and coming up in different spots. But uh, yeah, we, without video, I don't feel like I'm doing a, a very good job explaining what I'm talking about. But uh, if you have grown multiple varieties and don't have that problem, post some comments below and let me know um, or how you if it matters to you how you keep the, the varieties separate, um, if it matters to you that you do keep the varieties separate, please post some comments or email me jake at superbrewers.com and let me know what you do to keep track of which plants are which and how you separate them uh, or separate the varieties from each other. So that's pretty cool. Some other stuff I'm really excited about coming up. Um, John and I from Lucette are getting ready to start the registration for Iron Brewer 2015 pretty soon. Um, there's going to be some big changes from last year. I talked about them uh, a little while ago. Again, uh, brewing teams will be allowed up to four members per team. Um, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be a double elimination bracket, so everybody's going to get to brew at least twice. So what that's going to do is anybody that loses their matchup in the first round is going to get dropped down into a secondary bracket, and the secondary bracket will not be able to come back and win the main prize but there will be prizes for the secondary bracket as well so as a result of that we're going to need to rework uh, the prizes and hopefully we'll recruit some more sponsors and stuff to help out with that but keep an eye on superbrewers.com um, for more information about iron brewer and keep watching the videos and listening to my podcast and i'm gonna keep talking about that um, in the meantime, if you have any sort of skill at graphic design and would be interested in 
submitting a logo for Iron Brewer 2015. This is the one I made last year. So as you can see, it's not a great work of art, but just kind of trying to embody the challenge of Iron Brewer. So he's got a mash paddle and a brewing spoon and he's a ninja. So, I mean, it's kind of a spin-off of the Iron Chef TV series that, um, I mean, if you haven't watched Iron Chef, you've missed a lot of really good TV. But anyway, um, submit uh, an idea for a simple one color logo, um, or if it's really awesome, maybe a couple colors and if your logo design gets selected, uh, we will mail you at least a shirt um, once it's done. Or if you come to any of the uh, competition rounds, not only will you get a shirt, uh, I'll even buy you a beer. So, of course, it might be one of the entry beers, but anyway. Now, I, please, honestly, if you are have graphic design talents and you have an idea for an Iron Brewer logo, please submit it, Ma email it to jake at superbrewers.com and I will uh, collect those entries and then um, we'll figure out a way to, to pick the winner. So yeah, that would be awesome if you could help me out with that. And since I'm talking about Iron Brewer stuff, if you were an entrant last year, keep an eye on your email. I will be sending out notices for uh, registration because uh, registrants, people that brewed last year in the competition will have first dibs and uh, we will uh, keep you posted on the progress with that. And then uh, the one of the challenges is scheduling because we can't really start scheduling the, the competition until we get 16 brewers or brewing teams. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that and just keep brewing. I mean, it's so much fun. I, I wish I could brew, you know, once or twice a week and but i'm happy i've gotten to brew probably an average of twice a month since the beginning of the year and um man if i can keep that up i'm going to be really happy so grew up an adventure check out superbrewers.com if you like any of the videos that i've made please go to superbrewers.com scroll to the bottom of the page there's some uh, online shops there that if you if you're gonna buy stuff from them anyways please go through the links on super brewers but more important than that if you have a local homebrew shop buy as much beer and ingredients and everything from them as you can because without your local shop it just makes it a lot harder so Grew up an adventure. Cheers. Oh. If I close my eyes, fall asleep, and dream about beer, this might actually taste like beer. No take that. No take.